Sorry. Sorry, uh, my, mic is, my mic has been muted since. So what, I, what I'm saying is for this task run in line, what, you're, what you need to do is just, you know, create the bash script. This is your bash script. This is the file for your bash script that you're expected to create. <laughs> One run in line as the name of the file. So this is the file here. So, you know, you have your hash bank bin bash as usual. Then you have Python 3. I can see pi code. This is the environment variable. We are enclosing it in double quotes here just because of this dollar sign we are adding. So that's why we are enclosing it in double quotes. So pi code. So this tells the shell to run this whatever file or whatever command or whatever Python statement is in this environment variable stored here. This is telling the shell to run it with Python 3. That's just all it does. So you can see this is hash bank bin bash. This is telling you it's a bash script. So as I away from that, then this part of the instruction, you can see this part that says export pi code is equal to this. This is what gives pi code. This is what makes pi code. You know, we are storing this expression, this Python expression, we are storing it inside the PyCode variable, environment variable PyCode. So whenever your bash script sees that uh, run with Python 3 PyCode, it automatically runs this expression with Python 3, which it will interpret as best school 98. This will be your output. So you can create your file, put your code there, then run this in your sandbox. You know, run this in your sandbox environment, then you can run your shell scripts and you have your output, then you run your checker. That's all about that task. So for for the hello print task, write a Python script that prints exactly. Programming is like building a multilingual puzzle followed by a new line. Now we are told to use the function print. We should all know how to use the print function in Python. I believe we all know how to do that. So let me see if I can get an online Python interpreter. So you can see, this is a, a run print. So whatever you are told to print, you can just put it here. And that's all. You can see, that is how you print in Python, using just the print function. Here we are not using f strings because we are just printing a string directly. There is no need to use f strings. We don't need string formatting. I'm not bringing any variable into here, so we don't we don't need string formatting. So for the task, what are we told to do? Write a Python script that prints exactly this. So in your script, the name of your script will be two hyphen print dot py. Then you put your you know your directive there. Remember the directive for Python. This is it. All our Python scripts will start with this. We start with a uh, hash bank. Then you have user slash bin slash Python 3. This is what to start all our Python scripts. We can, you know, this is just telling Whatever is executing the script, the version of Python we want to use to execute it. It is also telling it it's a Python script. It's also, you know, telling it the particular version of a Python we want to use in running this script. So that is what this line does. So if you look at the instruction given for, for this task, we have already been told that all our all our shell scripts should should begin with this. The first line of all your files that's for shell scripts. Then for Python scripts, the first line should begin with this. Can you see? 
So that is why we are beginning with this. If we are writing Python code on our own, we can use whatever version of Python we want to use. Maybe Python 3.8, add it there, Python 2, depending on whatever code you are writing. So you can use that. Or if you have many Python, you know, if you have many Python versions on your system, you can use bin slash env, then you write the, give a space and write the particular version you want to use. So that is just how this works. So now back to the tasks. I believe that we should be done with task two if there are people here following for task two. So these are simple, simple tasks that we should be, you know, done with. If we have questions about this few tasks we've discussed, you, you know, you can bring your questions forward. If you have issues or tasks, you know, from this three tasks, if you have any question about them, just let us know. Sure, thank you, T. I think uh, it's been so helpful uh, for you to go through the tasks. I don't know if we can go through each one of the tasks, or we'll be here probably all night. Mm -hmm. uh, this baby is screaming. <laughs> Guys, please give me a mute. Okay. No problem. Go ahead. Uh, so how is so is everyone following T? How's it going? D which tasks do we have difficulty on, or which tasks do we specifically want to need explanation on? Perhaps we can narrow it down a bit. Um, yes. For me, I would I would also like to go through the quiz of the second project if that's possible. But uh, how can we manage time if we're going? Or do you think? You yeah, I, I think I agree with Elena. If we have particular tasks or specific tasks that we know are kind of difficult to want to discuss generally here, let us discuss them. Because because of time, we cannot just go through all of these tasks. We can't go through each and every one of them because of our time. So maybe I should just make a rundown or a basic rundown of the algorithm on, or a pseudocode of how the, you know, the tasks go. So for, for task three, I think, We've talked about task two. So for task three, you are told to complete a source code. This is the source code in order to print the integer stored in the variable number, followed by battery street, followed by a new line. So the source code is here. Then this is your target. The output of your script should be the number followed by bat battery street, followed by new line. And these are your requirements. You are not allowed to cast the variable number into a string your code must be three lines long and you have to use f strings that means you, when you want to use your print function you don't just use the ordinary print function you have to you know use f string formatting i hope we all understand how to go about this task so let me just open the code so maybe when we see the code we can easily just uh, just take a make a rundown of it so for this task, this is the this is the code for um, three print number. So you can see this is number. Now, why are we not putting number directly here? If you remember, for the instruct from the instruction, we are told to not cast this number to string. That is, we want to preserve the value of this number as an integer even in our output that is why we are using the f string then for f strings this is the number then look at this syntax you have a colon in front of number and you have d d is telling it that this number is of the type integer okay just like our percentage d in in c you know the conversion specifiers in c yeah, percentages, percentage S, percentage C, percentage D, percentage, uh, you know, O and the likes. Here, you can just put a, you put a colon in front of, you know, your variable and, you know, you declare the type D. As you go on further, you see how you can use this to specify the number of digits, you know, the spacing and so many other things, you know, you can use F strings for. I sent a link earlier that, that discusses F strings. You can all endeavor to check that link and, you know, you understand the syntax and how f strings work 
So that is that about this task. It's a quite simple task. So make sure, always remember to, you know, make your Python scripts executable by running the ch mode u plus x on each of them before you run your checker. Because if they are not executable, you won't be able to get an output. So that is that about task three. So for task four, task four is print floats. Print floats. So what are we to do for task four? Complete the source code in order to print the float stored in the variable number with a precision of two digits. And you see now that we are giving you know specific formatting requirements. We have you should print a float as the data type of the um, number stored, a float, and it should be printed with a precision of two digits. That means if for this file, file can be 3.142, blah, 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 you know, having a lot of digits. But what we want is just float 3.14. This is what you should have in your output. So, and you, you use F strings. You can see the requirement float, print out float, semicolon, followed by the float with only two digits. Float colon, then followed by the float. That's the float stored in this variable number with only two digits. That's the precision. Then we are not allowed to cast it to string. You have to use that strings. So let's just look at the code and see what we have to do. So for that one, the code is, um, Can you see it now? Can we all see it? Float. This is it. This is this is the float you are told to print. This is just ordinary string, ordinary text. And then this is our placeholder for the F strings. You can you can see the number variable in it, number, which is 3.14159. But we want to print it to a precision of two digits. This F is selling you as a float. Remember the other time we used D. The D was denoting that we wanted an integer. But here we are printing a float, but to a precision of two digits. That is why we have 0.2F. Okay, 0.2F. This notation is only used for floats. If you use point while you are dealing with, with integers, maybe like you write 0.2D, it will return an error for you. So for, for integers, you just have to write, maybe if you have you want two digits, you can just write 2D. That's all, after the colon. But because we want float here, we are using colon, then we have dot point two F. So, sorry, maybe many, many have never seen the code. So this is, this is the, this is the code for task four, which is the float, print float. That is the code for it. So let me just go back now and um, you can you cannot deal with the the fifth task. Please, are we following so that I don't just keep wasting my you know, saliva and time and energy? Do we have people here following? Yes, we're, we're, we're here. Okay. So, please, if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask them. That is what makes it interactive and we learn. And we, ha we don't understand and we ask questions. So, um, we are going to the fifth one now, the fifth task, which is print string. This is the source code. Let me open the source code for this one so that we don't just go straight to the answer and, you know, people don't understand. Complete this source code in order to print three times a string stored in the value str. This is the variable name now, the variable str, followed by its first nine characters. Its first nine characters. So we want to print three times a string. Three times a string stored in the variable str, followed by its first nine characters. Look at it here. This is an example of what we have to do. 
I think what we have there is Obatin School. So we want to print Obatin School, Obatin School, Obatin School. Then we want to print its first nine characters in addition after a new line has been printed. That is what we have here. This is the new line, Obatin. So now let's look at the code we are to complete. Let's take a look at the source code. So this is the source code. You can see. This is the source code here. Let me just edit it here to fuck it for me, but let me edit it here. So this is the this is the source code. What are we to do? We want to print whole button school three times using f print f right let me change this to four spaces then we want to print o button after using f print f to print o button school this string three times then we want to print o button so let's see how we can do that So we can we can use for this one we can use a for loop if you want to, but we have not to, we have not been told about loops. So we can just print you know because it's Python you can just multiply use just multiply the printing action by an integer, and it will do it for you. So look at what I'm saying now. This is our string. Print you know. I want to use f strings so you write your f and you put your two curly braces i say curly braces your two quotation marks then after that after your puts you can this is your placeholder for f strings this is the placeholder so we want to print str three times so this is three a uh, str this is a this is another feature of python that we don't have in c in python this is a string but i'm multiplying a string with an integer and because it's python it will what it will just do is give me three instances of this of this string which is overton school it will give give it to me three times so this is f3 times str so i can close this you know, after this, what are we to do again? We are to print the first nine characters of str. So this print automatically terminates to a new line. This this line print f. Can we all see it? This automatically terminates to a new line. I don't have to, you know, in like in C add slash n. I don't have to add this. It automatically takes it closes the line after executing that statement it closes that line and goes to the next line so i can now write another print statement which is for the next requirement which is to print the first nine characters of str so this is our placeholder and we can have this then in the placeholder i want the first nine characters of str so we can slice through str with our string slicing technique so and what do we do? Nine. You can make it zero to nine or just write colon and nine. Python understands that you want the from the start to the ninth character of that string. So this is all you need. So you can just save this and you know do your ch mode, then run your checker, and you have the required output. What we will have as our output is O button school written together three times. Then the line is ended. Then we have old button. This is the first nine characters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So O button is the first nine characters, and we'll get that as our output. So that is that about that task. That's task five. So for task six, we are to play with strings.